2019, Daniel Ricciardo has decided to leave Red Bull and go to Renault, where he is joining German driver Nico Hülkenberg. But in today's video, I'm going to look at why I think this move will eventually work out. To understand why I think it's going to work out, check out this video. So during 2018, Daniel Ricciardo announced he was going to Renault in a shock decision. As it was pretty safe to say in 2018, Renault were miles behind Red Bull in terms of pace. And it's completely understandable why people are doubting Daniel Ricciardo's decision. But there has been plenty of examples in the past where drivers have moved to another team when at the time it didn't really make any sense. Let's go through some examples now. First off, you have Lewis Hamilton going from McLaren to Mercedes. When Lewis Hamilton left McLaren, McLaren were able to challenge for the World Championship as the Silver Arrow team could not. And at the time, it did seem to be a strange decision as Mercedes looked a lot slower at the time than McLaren. But two years later, it worked out as Mercedes were now dominating Formula 1. Another great example is Michael Schumacher's move from Benetton in 1995 to Ferrari. In 94 and 95, Michael won his first two driver's titles with Benetton. And it seemed a bit silly to go to Ferrari as Ferrari was still not that great in 94 or 1995. And it didn't seem to be the greatest decision after a not so great year in 1996. But eventually by the early 2000s it worked out as Michael and Ferrari were now dominating the sport. Not necessarily a great driver move, but a great driver decision was Jensen Button's decision to stay at Honda in 2005 and not go to Williams. Even though Williams were a bigger team and were faster at that time, eventually Button's decision did work out. As in 2009, Honda became Braun and Jensen Button won his only driver's championship. Other ones include Nicky Lauda's decision to go to Ferrari in 1974. This was after a disastrous 1973 for the Scuderia. And it didn't at the time seem as though it was going to work out, but it did as Lauda won two of his three driver's titles at Ferrari and deserved to win in 1976. You also have Mark Webber's decision to go from Williams to Red Bull in 2007. You have to remember at this time, Williams had a faster car and were the much bigger team. So going to Red Bull didn't make much sense at the time, but it did work out as by 2010, Red Bull now had the fastest car on the grid. Another one is David Coulthard's decision to leave Williams in 1995 and go to McLaren for 1996. When he left for McLaren, Williams at the time had the best car and McLaren were at the front of the midfield basically. But by 1998, the roles were now reversed and Coulthard was now in the best car. And the final one is Nigel Mansell's decision to go from Ferrari in 1990 to Williams in 1991. Now in 1989 and 1990, Ferrari were faster than Williams. And there was no guarantee that Williams would be successful again as a team. But luckily for Mansell, they were as they went on to dominate the sport in the early to mid 1990s. So those are some examples of great driver moves and driver's decisions. If I forgot any, make sure to put them in the comments section down below. But also there has been some terrible driver choices and driver moves in the past. For example, Fernando Alonso's decision to go from Ferrari in 2014 to McLaren Honda in 2015. Now I know in hindsight it was not a good move, but I think it was a lot bigger of a risk at the time to go to the McLaren Honda project rather than stay at Ferrari. Because there was no guarantee that the new McLaren Honda project was actually going to work. And it would have been a safer decision to stay at Ferrari instead of going to McLaren. But of course he went to McLaren and it absolutely failed. Another one is Jacques Villeneuve leaving Williams at the end of 1998 and going to the all new BAR team in 1999. The reason this was such a bad decision is because after he joined, BAR, when they were BAR, never won a Grand Prix. And he was now mired in the midfield as Williams were back to winning races by 2001. And you could argue this is one of the worst driver decisions of all time. And another bad one is Damon Hill's decision to go to Arrows in 1997 after being kicked out by Williams. Now again, he couldn't stay at Williams because he was basically kicked out by the team, but he could have gone to a better team at the time than Arrows, who were nearer to the back of the grid at the time, despite him almost winning the 1997 Hungarian Grand Prix. 
But again, if I have forgot any bad driver moves or driver decisions, put them in the comments section down below. But why exactly has Daniel Ricciardo decided to leave Red Bull when they have the best chassis on the grid and based on what we saw in 2018, are much faster than Renault? Well, for me, it's for two reasons. One, because Max Verstappen is now the clear number one driver at Red Bull. Red Bull are not publicly going to come out and say he's the clear number one, but we all know he basically is. And if Daniel Ricciardo has aspirations of winning a world title, it's not going to be possible if he is a number two driver to Max Verstappen. And another reason is that he believes in what Renault are doing. He believes in Renault's goals, which are to be winning races and competing for a world championship by 2022. Now, I know right now it doesn't seem realistic, but you have to remember three years is a long time in F1. Just look at the progress Renault have made in three seasons, for example. 2016, they finished in 9th. In 2017, they finished in P6. And in 2018, they finished P4 in the Constructors. Now, I know for some people's liking, this is not enough progress. But for me, this is just about enough. Of course, it could be better. But you have to remember, winning teams are not built overnight. Things take time. And now I have some graphs to show you to prove that, again, it takes time to build a winning team. Here's the first example in Mercedes. By the way, the numbers on the left are podiums. So starting off in the first couple of seasons in 2010 and 2011, Mercedes had about two or three podiums. Then in 2012, they won their first race, but were not really close enough to actually compete consistently for race wins and compete for a world title. But then when Lewis Hamilton joined the team in 2013, they improved a lot. And then by 2014, they were now dominating F1. This is now an example of BMW. In 2006 and 2007, they had a couple of podiums. But then by 2008, they had plenty of podiums and their first race win. But then by 2009, they fell off the edge of a cliff. And by 2010, they were now out of F1. Here's an example of Renault starting in 2002 when they came back into the sport as a constructor. 2002 was not that great of a season, but then in 2003 and 2004, they had plenty of podiums. And in 2005 and 2006, they were now winning both the drivers and constructors titles. Now this is an example of Ferrari when Jean Todt joined the team. In 94 and 95, Ferrari were getting podiums, but they weren't really competing consistently for race wins. But when Michael Schumacher joined, they got better and better specifically in that area. And again, as I said earlier, by the early 2000s, they were now dominating the sport. And this is another example of Ferrari starting from 2015. After a terrible 2014, they massively improved for 2015, but then dropped off in 2016. But then culminating with the 2017 regulation changes, they improved their car and were now able in 2017 and 2018 to compete for the world title. And the final example is McLaren in the mid to late 90s. After Ayrton Senna left the team, McLaren for a couple of years were struggling. But once they forged a new partnership with Mercedes-Benz in 1995, progressively things got better. As by 1997, they were now starting to pick up race wins again. And then by 1998, they had the best car and won the drivers and constructors titles. And I think those examples right there prove things take time. Rome was not built in a day. And neither is a winning F1 team. It takes three to four seasons at least. Now, I know Renault have already had three seasons, but look at McLaren. It took them about six. And I just think people out there need to be a little more patient, especially when you consider where Renault came from at the start of 2016. But with this move for Daniel Ricciardo, is it going to work? Well, in my opinion, yes, it will eventually. In 2019, I think Ricciardo will be finishing consistently, say, in P6, P7, P8, that kind of area. But then by 2020, Renault should be now competing seriously for podiums. If they're not, then they're not making enough progress. But I think they will have made enough progress by that season. But as long as Ricardo has patience, by 2021 or 2022, they should now start winning races. Whether they'll win a championship or not, I don't know. We'll have to see. But if you are a fan of Renault or a fan of Daniel Ricardo, you have to be patient because it's going to take a long time for them to get to the front of the field. Okay. 
it may take longer than we think, or it might actually be quicker. We don't know yet, but it definitely won't be in 2019. But again, I do think eventually this will work out. It's just going to take a bit of time. And if Renault, and I think they will continue to make the progress that they have made, then eventually we will see Shuri's again on the podium, but this time in yellow. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to comment down below what you thought of this video and what do you think is going to happen with Daniel Ricciardo at Renault. Do you think it's going to work out? And how long do you think it's going to take for Renault to make enough progress to be fighting for race wins, say, on a consistent basis? As well, don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. But until next time, guys, it's been me, Chazar HD. Goodbye.